Thank you. Post of another shake for that live performance. And those three other people you brought to dance with you. Yeah, we didn't know you were bringing other people, but that was a, f- a phenomenal tr- I like it. Which is how to use that kick drum. What's up, everyone? It's Ricker and Bond. It's your friends back again. Getting that fucking in. Trying not to say fuck <laughs> so much. Damn. I think I got a big dude count. I also have a, a big fucking count. Um, you know, could always pronunciate a little more over on, on, on my side of the Shure SM7B, probably. Whenever I want to say fucking, I'm just going to say press the digitation instead. What's that? All right. Welcome back to that. It doesn't even make sense. I pre, think it's... Pre digest, <laughs> pre-digesting? Press the digitation. I don't know. I heard it on Aquila and the B. I don't know what it <laughs> means. Uh, press the digitation definition. P R E. Magic tricks performed as entertainment is a noun. Okay, that's what a podcast is. Press the digitation. It's All right, guys. For entertainment. Rick and Bob. Let me spell it. Though. Let me spell it. Let me spell it. P-R-E. You can't spell it. It's too way too long for you. <laughs> P-R-E. You'll never get it. S- yes. D. No. Digit- uh, no. T. Press digitation. Press to digitation. Oh man, that's that's just the announcers fucked up. That sounded like a hard D. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going home. You let your school and your city you down. Press digitation is, is what your I hear. Your parents are getting divorced because you're a failure. That one announcer that playback like- tape. <laughs> Play back the tape. Press the digitation. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to go home, sir. The the famous white Damn. guy who does the announcing for the spelling bees. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He's famous. He does it all the time. I don't know. I don't watch the spelling bee ever. Are you spelling fucking out of like, your mind? Is the spelling bee going to be on the Zoom now? I mean, the kids can just cheat. <laughs> on Google? <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally. Bro, I'm editing these fucking Zoom classes for my job and yeah. some of the classes have like elementary kids in them and the elementary the teacher will like be like i don't fucking know how to use zoom and then i'll hear like a seven-year-old voice be like we gotta fucking go to the tab and pull down the, the menu and, and press like allow record can you give me zoom recording please mrs johnson i'll just fucking do it for you <laughs> that was fucking hilarious make me a host teach yeah like damn they know a lot like is this you know yeah once you grow up with to, computers yeah. Damn, they probably learned that all that shit in like the last two months or some shit. Yeah, definitely. Damn. Probably know Zoom. more about that than whatever they're learning in school. Dude, Zoom has like around. I've used a lot of these programs. I've used everyone except for Microsoft Teams. And Zoom is the only one that has a recording feature. And I don't know why. Different audio for each person on the zoom call amazing yeah that too like what the like what that seems like an easy feature to just throw in google skype like maybe maybe it's a privacy thing they don't want to be responsible for holding everybody's recordings i mean perhaps i mean i don't know that doesn't do they just not want you to do it it doesn't seem like a privacy issue if, as long as you like agree to it. Well, I mean, like, says, if they have to hold hold all of the recording somewhere, they might not want to be responsible for someone going in and grabbing all those sweet, sweet Zoomies and Google Meeties. They don't have to hold it. Locals. The user holds it. Yeah. Locals only? Locals only. Farmers only. Only fans. Have you subscribed to any good OnlyFans lately? Yeah, there's one chick who teaches you how to crochet. She does it close, uh-huh. but sometimes she gets kind of, you know, saucy with the language. She says the F word sometimes. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Yeah. Friendship Unsubscribed. Is what it was. Yeah. Unsubscribed. She was like, I am your friend, your favorite pals, Bon Jen in college on David Rieger. And I was like, hey, lady, what the fuck? That's our thing. That's my line. For those of you that know obscure wrestling references. That's my line. TNA, Jay Lethal, Ric Flair. Ring any bells, Bon Jen. Oh, that one must have crossed my mind. You missed that, that episode. Have... You missed it. It was a I good was sick one. that day. Yeah. Dark. I was about to say dark racial humor, dude. <laughs> what is what is that? What is dark racial humor? 
I don't know. It's just kind of like, you know, my brand of comedy, you know, sometimes I like getting dark, dark humor. I saw on Twitter one time, uh, if so it was like, if someone says uh, they have a dark sense of humor, they're just racist. Am I racist? I don't know, but it's funny. Damn. Rick and Bond, your pals, in-depth free thinking... flowing conversation about whatever's appropriate at the time. I'm Bond Jen. I'm Caller John David Ricker the third. I was thinking about the other day about how comedy's dead. Mm-mm. About how Mm-mm. you can't make it. What? Uh oh. I don't Objection? think so. Have oh, you heard I'm my sorry. play a bit? Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think so. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good comedy is dead. Um, <laughs> Now, comedy's not dead, but like, you know what I mean. Like, fucking, sorry, press the digitation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. Like, you used to be able to say anything, yeah, anything, and now you can't say nothing. Can't I say nothing really without someone with saying, saying something, and somebody needs to say something and just not care. Somebody I still think people back. do that who i think people are like i don't know if i should say that or they they're pussy and they say it and then on stage they're like oh am i allowed to say that oh don't I cancel don't me so. i don't think so especially in comedy comedy that's like comedy's thing i understand where it, that that perspective comes in but like all the comedians that i fuck with are people that are in like in like famous comedians that people like like comedians comedians adore are people that Go hard on social commentary. Prior, Carlin, that one dude that wore all black and yelled a lot. I forget his name. Social commentary commentary. about like. That's what comedy is, dude. Yeah, but like, I feel like if somebody's doing social social commentary about stuff that's like present and stuff you're supposed to agree with like if someone's like white people are so stupid because they they're so racist these days you know like fucking bill bird did a whole thing on that i'm like yeah of course you're supposed to feel that way like do something against the grain you know kind of i mean i think birds like the snl skit yeah and all the uh like all the comedy i see of like stuff that's like against the grain i look at the date and the date and it was like posted like in 2010 or something i'm just like oh okay yeah i i just i don't know i don't agree i think com- comedians that do that are still doing that i'm not even up on my stand up hello but there's a there's there- a you know bert kreischer at all who bert kreischer is a comedian yeah he has a, a Netflix show that's funny. There's some clips. It's called The Cabin. You should check out some of the clips. It's a, it's a, it's a fun time. It's fun. Damn, somebody's cooking? <laughs> Fuck. I don't agree with that, dude. I don't, I don't think comedians are, are kind of... I do think that they're aware of like the kind of uh, climate of people being uh, like testy with stuff. But Anthony Jeselnik. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's not afraid. He's a guy that's not afraid. He's like one of the few guys that's like not afraid. But I feel like his comedy is his brand was always different than other people. It's a little I feel like if it was like the nineties, he'd be able to break into the mainstream. But now he's becoming he's just he, he's kind of there. He has like a core audience of people that really fuck with dark humor, but it won't get any yeah. bigger than that. Like he'll yeah. probably never be on like a show on fucking abc or anything you know yeah i I mean that's kind of i I feel like that's kind of an antiquated thing of comedians trying to be on daytime tv and stuff now yeah comedy's still kind of like or even like a uh i don't know like a nighttime show to promote a new special or something i think that's just fucking antiquated in comedy yeah but you gotta do what you gotta do to make your career I think it's, it's, it's toward, I mean, it's that new media stuff, dude. Like, I do think you get to a point. Say you're like, you're a famous comedian or you're getting there. I don't know who's like medium famous. They're all kind of the same to me, except for the really big guys like Kevin Hart. But like, you get to a point where you kind of got to like take every opportunity to get your image out there. 
and like sometimes your agent will be like i don't know if this is like a good fit for your image based on your last routine and then it's it's at that point that you got to realize okay do i change my act to make more money or do i stay true to what got me here in the first place and stay not that famous yeah i kind of get that but the people that like like kevin kevin hart would, <clears throat> would be someone that would be what doing what you're doing what you're saying <laughs> yeah he did he definitely did that yeah that's that's the kind of comedians i don't really like fully enjoy yeah because that that is like mainstream comedy you know yeah see like now kevin hart level fame used to be like chris rock's not really dark he's not very dark but he's darker than kevin hart and he was like the yeah. king back then you yeah know? yeah i get that i get what you're saying very like <laughs> family abc late night talk show comedy that's never been my my type of comedy chris rock my comedy's the the cats that are goddamn podcasting and talking about ball sacks and other stuff <laughs> this is i wonder when uh i don't know i wonder where all this is gonna lead this this podcast comedian train uh direct to consumer stuff is what it they're is they're all uh in competition with each other really kind of. they all have their own niche audiences and they Networks all help each other they all interview each other yeah there's not they're... i mean there's no really like in that space in like in like podcasting too it's not really like it's not there's really no like true competition like, cause if you, if you all network on the same stuff and especially on like a touring comedy lane, like you're going to go into cities and people will still see you that network. You, you just boost your brand more. It's so weird that they used to, I guess maybe they still do all live in LA. And when they want to do a podcast with someone sit in LA traffic and drive to someone's house or their studio, and they could have just ring them up on zoom. And... yeah no one was thinking about that though and then also it does especially with uh like like with this is kind of different because we have like a built rapport with each other but if you're kind of just you know guest after guest after guest um having that human interaction does make a, a different vibe and and conversation for sure yeah i think even, even now it'd, it'd be different a little bit than zoom oh, versus man. human so Damn. direct to consumer man that's what it is that's what direct music consumer. is going kind of towards except you have streaming platforms but yeah with comedy is that the new media stuff you build up your audience and give them your website and have a link to your new special that isn't on netflix <laughs> and then when you come in to town a tour they, they they show up give you that money was it on vimeo no v vimeo youtube Definitely Johnny. Netflix is the, is the thing. I know Burr has the like uh, all things comedy website, is, which I think might host things. Is Netflix direct to consumer? I mean, when I say that, I mean like creator direct to consumer. So, from like a creator perspective, no, but like that's. Netflix, I, I think Netflix is your new, especially for comedians, that's your new, like, late night, get your, your voice out for comedy. Yeah. Not goddamn Jimmy Fallon at night <laughs> with your 10-minute ass set. But, I, yeah, I, I I get that. It puts you in front of millions of people, but... Fucking Jimmy Fallon, dude. Antiquated comedy. Jimmy Fallon still, like, all that shit still gets... A shit ton of views on youtube and stuff though yeah yeah like just like the clips and whatnot <laughs> for sure puts so there's you in still, front of a lot still of an audience damn speaking of audience what never mind i was gonna say i was gonna say we're getting a lot of comments on processing power it's all fucking spam it's wow, all bullshit just... it's all just like hey you want to fuck me local girls want to fuck in your town tonight and i'm like how about you just Comment about what's on the video, <laughs> goddammit. Comment about the, the HomePod Mini. 
comment back and there's response so you at least have double the comment amounts like jesus the Jesus. gotta upload some r b to youtube as well yes i slack on that so much this we need i need to like incorporate more clips it's hard to clip this show sometimes yeah we don't really talk about specific things i mean there's always there's always an arc you kind of have to find it though yeah yeah you gotta find the beginning because usually there's a beginning and an end for topics it is kind of drawn out but that's what a podcast is i suppose podcasting like there's, never, there's never really a like a solid sometimes but more more often than not there's not like a solid three to four minute clip about a concise boom 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 topic you know i've never made more money than this i mean when we actually make money from this we're never going to talk about it <laughs> we're just never going to speak at, on it they don't know they don't know the difference i'll be like yeah they got it they got it now got it like that <laughs> we'll be we'll be there'd be uh just a super succinct intro saying what's going on every guys have a nice little yeah. tagline dude. they sound like they want to do it this time <laughs> It sounds like they're ready to pod. Man, are we are we close to twenty? Because I got I got a kind of Spotify thing. Yes, are we we're close at to eighteen. All right, then let's just fucking eh, let's talk. About Wrap it up. It. Catch you guys right. next week. It's free. T- <laughs> no, it's free T-shirt Friday. I forgot um, you, you fuckers still haven't gone over to Instagram, Peter. The episode's not over, but go to Instagram right now, Ricker Ambon. DM us. I want my free t-shirt. One person gets a free t-shirt. And we've been telling you this for a couple episodes, but nobody is claiming free t-shirt. So you, you know what they say? You gotta say it like seven times. You gotta see it seven times, hear it seven times before someone does it. It's only been yeah, like four. You, you fake the fakest fans, the realest show with the fakest fans. All right. I'll catch you guys in a minute. Sick tagline. You know how Thank fast you, you have to be to reach the top of the race? Before it even starts? You think niggas don't cry, man? Cry. I cry every day in the morning. At the oh, end of that song, it's like uh, him talking about his mom. Very, very cute, very cute. And he's like, I cry most of my mom. And he says, a whole mom burst, dude. Pussy, Damn. you know? What a fucking dweeb, <laughs> bro. Like, oh, you Shit. love your mom. Like she oh, so much dude. for you like she whatever. don't love you bro she don't love you bro she thinking about someone else bro just just focus, focus on your yourself dad, bro dude. <laughs> with your dad more than you dude bro i saw your mom at the fucking movies with your dad bro you what you gonna do bro you gonna let him fucking pipe your mom bro you gonna, freud <laughs> freud came up to me he's like hey bro you're just gonna let your mom fuck your dad like that dude oh my god you're gonna let him fucking grab your mom's ass like that bro <laughs> Look at that. Look, you gotta let him disrespect you like that, bro. Fuck him, take him to the ground, fam. You gotta let him do that. This is your city, bro. He's gonna fucking just show up after 15 years, drop off some dick to your mom and dip again. Nowhere else can you get niche Freudian dark humor like like Ricker and Bond. Like Ricker and Bond. Gosh darn it. What's up, everybody? Speaking of free t shirt Friday. All you got to do is go over there on Instagram, Ricker and Bond, say, I want my free T-shirt. You get a free T-shirt. Another shirt that I, I brought up to the execs, the suits, the ties, the big wigs, big Barker himself, uh, a, a, a Bond Gen T. A Bond Gen T. Yeah, yeah. What would, that, what would that comprise of? What do you think? Just uh, my name? Nope. What? Just the black T-shirt. <laughs> Oh, oh, I get it. Oh, <laughs> so you're cool. Right. You might have to put uh, a logo on the back neck. I don't know. Just for like, because at that point, the, in, the inside joke really is just for the consumer. I don't know if you really need to express that to people who see it, but you could have that. Pants little, on it, too. You, you, nah, the Bonjin tea is going to be good, dude. And it's going to be like $99. Nah, it's not. That with it? What no, it's 55. Not. That's dumb. It's going to be like 15 bucks. Ricker and Bond is uh, on sale right now. The t-shirt, ws.live slash store. If you don't want a free t-shirt, it's uh, on sale $25 right now. Shipped you anywhere in the fucking world. That's right. Bond gin tees are now available. 
in mass and book. You'll be the hype to all your friends. Keep it simple. Bon Gin tees. Darker than my soul. I have Ooh. a Bon Gin painting and a Bon Gin blanket. <laughs> this is black brand. One day I'll have a Bon Gin Tesla and a Bon Gin dog. Tesla? What are you getting those cheap ass cars for? <sighs> so affordable. <laughs> like I want that, one. That future oriented Tesla market? I want to sleep in it. I feel like I saw a Tesla headline the other day that was like bad. I didn't. I saw I was watching old Tesla thing on like CNBC of like 2010. Pretty cute, pretty cute little, pretty cute little little musk going over there talking. <laughs> he got he had more of a, a talking prowess than he does now. At his, Elon. At his uh conferences. Before the fucking like mother goddamn fucking robot dweeb. Bad before ass. the hype, that was before he got laid, and then once he got laid, he fell off. He, he, he got it, he wasn't became addicted. He became addicted. He started having kids. He was like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to build rockets anymore. I want to hang out with my girlfriend. <laughs> Same thing um, like 20 year old girlfriend. I don't, I don't want to make electric cars anymore or build solar panels. I want to hang out with I my don't girlfriend. I don't feel the drive anymore. Before yeah, I, it was just this this immeasurable urge to create to make life for humans better and progress them into the future because God knows they need that help. But as soon as I slipped into that artist push, it just kind of felt like watching football. Yeah, I uh, I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna build another rocket company to help us get to Mars, but you know, Grimes' mom needs help moving, so I gotta go take care of that <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Call it, calling his kids Grimes kids what's the fucking son's name I don't know it's some bullshit I, I, it was some weird text characters but when that was like a, a big meme on the internet I really didn't know what it was and for like the longest yeah. time I didn't know that it was rooted in Elon Musk's kid's name <laughs> it was rooted in deep unforgivable racism Probably just deep, unforg unforgivable BDSM with Grimes and Musk. Dude, you know Grimes' little body, with her little body, just ties him up and whips the fuck out of him. That's what those CEOs want, dude. They, don't, they want lack of control. Probably. Damn. Bastards. Those gross, gross boys. Whoa, hey, 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 hey. Don't knock it till you try it. Um... <laughs> uh yeah. let's hop into some news shall we got a link we got some good news and some bad news hit me with the bad news the good news is well before <laughs> i tell you the bad news i gotta tell you the good news okay the good news is the pope he's cool with gay marriage oh i'm sorry same-sex civil unions the uh, bad news is he's going to hell. <laughs> More on it later. I thought you were going to say down with gay marriage, but not gay sex. <laughs> I'm down yeah, if you yeah. guys want to contractually put your relationship to the, the law of the land. But once you try to touch each other, that's when God tells me, hey, no, 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 no. Say something on that balcony of yours. You guys can get married, but you can't share a bedroom. You can't touch. No, can't kiss. Absolutely no kids. No kids. The no only one. thing you can do is get some tax breaks and you know some some bank joint accounts, whatever. Maybe Fine. save your partner's life if they're on life support. You know, sure. Sign for their surgery that they need to make sure that they live a long life. Whatever. Yeah. As soon as you try to have a family, some kind of family values, and this you we're fucking drawing sexual organs. No way. No way. Jesus told me in Italian, no. Can I can yeah. I still get my haircut yeah. though? No, no haircut. God damn. Except for haircut. except for our except for our gay neighbors, which have eight hundred credit score. The They're Pope's way better parents than me. The the Pope's gay neighbors, he goes over there and says, Hey guys, you you guys can do anything. You guys are cool. Let's dive in to the New York Times 
Pope Francis in a shift for church because you know he he's the guy he thinks for everyone yeah. voices support for same-sex civil unions the comments shown in a new documentary are the strongest yet of a pontificate that has taken a more tolerant and inclusive tone Pope Francis expressed support for same-sex civil unions in remarks revealed in a documentary film that premiered on Wednesday, a significant break from his predecessors that staked out new ground for the church and its recognition of gay people. The remarks coming from the leader of the Roman Catholic Church had the potential to shift debates about the legal status of same-sex couples in nations around the globe, globe and unsettle bishops worry that the unions threaten what the church considers traditional marriage between one man and one woman. What we have to create is a civil union law that that way they are legally covered. Francis in the documentary, Francesco, which debuted at the Rome Film Festival, reiterating his view that gay people are children of God. I stood up for that. Many, many gay Catholics and their allies outside of the church welcomed the Pope's remarks, though Francis's opposition to gay marriage within the church remained absolute. His conservative critics within the church hierarchy and especially in the conservative wing of the church in the United States, who have for years accused them of diluting church doctrine, say that the remarks are the reversal of a church teaching. Church teaching. The Pope's statement clearly contradicts what has been the longstanding teaching of the church and same-sex union, said Bishop Thomas Tobin of Providence, Rhode Island, adding that the remarks need to be clarified. There was little doubt that Francis recorded on camera made the statements during the pontificate uh, but there was confusion on Wednesday about what he had said with them and whom. So the so Vatican dismissed him, them as old news. People want him to say gay marriage is cool, but clarify, hey, hey, they're definitely going to go to hell. Huh, yeah. <laughs> Francis has a tendency for making off-the-cuff public remarks, a trait that maddens both supporters and critics alike. The comments shown in the film are likely to generate exactly the sort of discussion the Pope has repeatedly sought to foster on issues once considered forbidden in the Church's culture wars. Francis has already drastically shifted the tone of the Church on questions related to homosexuality. He has done little on policy and not changed teaching for a Church that sees its future growth in the Southern Hemisphere where the uh, clerical hierarchy is generally less tolerant of homosexuality. Blink huh. as society culture changes in front of your eyes. I mean, everything yeah. is changing and it's changing in my lifetime. What is going on? So, Evolution yeah, of society. So, yeah, that's a that's a step forward there. Um. Is Jesus happy? That's another question. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jesus. Fucking. I wonder uh, if all the, the Catholic priests that are fucking little boys are like, shit, are we in the clear? You just stand up yeah. for us. You, you, like, hand in hand, dude. <laughs> once damn. Once the memo goes out, it's all it's all for the proliferation? Progression? Of those those boy diddling can't can't not like gays and and diddle boys at the same time. Damn. Speaking of diddling, we have some um, Epstein news. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Epstein's pal. What's her name? Jisling. Jisling. This is also from the New York Times. Nwit. Oh wow, are they fucking gonna at Wald you? Oh my god. You know oh my for those god. of you watching on YouTube, you can see that the Holy Spirit has entered my camera and was saying, Hey, 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 hey. Jesus has something to say. He sure does. Transcripts released Thursday show Jeffrey Epstein's ex girlfriend was combative and defensive under tough questioning for Four years ago about her ex-boyfriend's interactions with underage girls in the transcripts, Ghislaine Maxwell reportedly denied hiring anyone under the age of 18 for Epstein and never saw any, any inappropriate underage activities with Jeffrey ever, she said. Manhattan U.S. District Attorney Loretta A. Preska had ordered the transcripts for seven hours of seven hours of depositions of Maxwell released by 9 a.m. Thursday. Preska 
allow the release of the transcripts after rejecting arguments from Maxwell's lawyers that the interviews for a defamation lawsuit brought against Maxwell by an alleged Epstein victim several years ago would jeopardize a fair criminal trial for her next July. Maxwell, 58, has been held without bail since her July arrest on charges that she procure three underage girls for Epstein to sexually abuse between 1994 and 1997. She had pleaded not guilty. The transcripts were among over 2,000 pages of documents that began to be released last year after a federal appeals court began the unsealing of documents from the since settled defamation case brought in 2015 by Virginia Geoffrey. She and mm. Maxwell recruited her at age 17 to be sexually abused by Epstein and Maxwell from 1999 to 2002. Geoffrey uh, had accused Epstein of arranging her to have sexual encounters with numerous wealthy and influential men, including Britain's Prince Andrew. He and the other men have denied their, her allegations during the 2016 deposition. Maxwell parried a long list of inquiries about Epstein's sexual proclivities and her interactions with Geoffrey and other, and other young women, insisting she never saw Epstein have sex with anybody. She is an absolute total liar and, and all... She's an absolute total liar and all know she lied on multiple things. And that is just one of the other disgusting things she added, Maxwell said, denying having three-way sex with Epstein and Geoffrey. Geoffrey spoke to CBS this morning, co-host Gail King in July and told her, you couldn't say no to Epstein and Maxwell from her position because you're afraid for your life. When asked by King whether she thought there should be men panicking over what Maxwell, Maxwell might tell authorities, Geoffrey said she really hoped they are. Very, very well-known, popular men that everybody would know the names of. I can't wait for the day of the truth of light, she says in the transcripts. Maxwell reportedly de derided Jeffrey, calling her an awful fantasist. Are we tallying all the lies, Maxwell said, saying she could not recall talking Jeffrey out, taking Jeffrey out for a night clubbing with Andrew in London. Her issue of lies is extremely hard to pick apart, which is true and what isn't. She said she never instructed Virginia to have sex with anybody ever. Asked if she trained Jeffrey to recruit others to perform sexual massages. Maxwell said that's absurd. Asked for whether Maxwell was Epstein's okay. girlfriend. Stop reading, dude. Stop reading. What? That's a lot. That's a whole lot of reading. It's a lot of reading. That was that was a whole lot of reading, my friend. You you got to know oh, when to, when to hold them and when to fold them, my guy. I was just I was just deep in the rabbit hole. You were just fucking. At least get some like inflection, some character voices in there a tiny bit. Those are deep allegations on the, the Epstein and Ghislaine, the deep Ghislaine front, man. The deepest. Big allegations. Big owls, as we like to call them. Big owls. She's fucked. Big owls, dude. She's Whole fucked. Whole lot of owls, Ghislaine. How is Bill going to kill her? <laughs> Bill, Bill's just playing video games, dude. Bill's fucking like, shit, shit fuck shit shit fuck she's gonna talk there might be a whole lot of cats that are doing that very interesting dude this will be definitely something to look back on in a few decades or something when yes. things are probably a little more in the light i would assume i don't know maybe it'll be buried under the papers of the government and other things but Pretty yeah, weird definitely. stuff, Ming. Yes, I can when you got big gov and big money. A lot of big government, a lot of money makes a lot of secrets and a lot of secrets about other things other than money. Society and the Pope oh. is gay. <laughs> gay ass motherfucking Pope, dude. This is him coming out of the closet. This is the first step. Everybody all insecure, be like, yo, I'm not gay, dude. Just got my Christian, man. Fuck you. Yo, I'm not I fuck gay. my wife I every day, bro. Really love Jesus. Pope really? said gay is cool. I mean, it's whatever. Just know that I'm not gay. I just really love Jesus. I just really love him so much. Speaking of content, <laughs> content, dude, you ever heard of Spotify? Never. You ever heard of podcasts? Uh, my friend has one, I think. I don't know, really know what they are. <laughs> he does this thing once a week where he talks into his computer and says he uploads into the World Wide Web. I don't understand. It's probably like pretty it. fucking lame shit. I don't do that shit. I'm a it's Christian. It's so dumb, dude. It's just not Christian. Um, Gonna bring on a new show to the Adobe House 
network of shows of podcasting online. Uh -oh. why. why? Because Spotify rolled out a new feature where you can embed songs into podcasts straight from their Spotify thing and kind of straight from Anchor, basically. So they're TikToking it. Kind of. They're 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 trying to blend their music and their and they didn't call it podcast on the press release, which I found very interesting. And I kind of want to make another podcast with the phrase they use, but they call it talk content. I might make like talk a, content like a business thing for a podcast about that, so it catches. I really day. hate that name. Call it talk content. Talk content. Maybe Instead it'll grow on me. Yeah, kind of, kind of a C plus name for me. The phrase, like, all it, it all at first it always sounds kind of bad unless it hits you, but I do believe that sometimes phrases have to grow into the brand. But gonna make a, a nice little little music interview show. Talk to people with the the, the classic vanity vein. Can also supplement that into soapy lawn stuff as well. Nice. Is this a weekly show? Yeah. Monthly. No. Seasons. Monthly. Uh, seasons. Ten episode drops. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> gonna. I've already reached out to some cast. Um, that are that are in the the immediate Adobe House music circle. Um, some Arizona oh, yes. some people. Arizona Our good people. friend. <laughs> L.A. people. But then, <laughs> like our good friend Kid Grin. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching. I was watching him on on uh, it's Z X Z four Twitch doing some Pokemon stuff. Did he was. That? Yeah, <clears throat> they uh, they twitch it up. Really? They do. They do. Wow! Interesting that they still keep in touch. Yeah, video games and and childhood Pokemon and collectibles things like that brings people together you know what i'm saying yeah dude he was an odd guy yeah still that man still that man but hey he's alive and he's got internet so that means something hey, yo he's got that internet so pokemon cards um oh, yeah gonna start doing uh i think tomorrow with someone from that was a uh, met in arizona with the music then the lasso. Ah, uh, yes. Lasso. Uh, lasso. I thought he lived in LA. He's in Go Michigan. Uh, but met in Arizona is what the thing. He's in Michigan, I believe. Uh, doing some stuff with Mellow Music Group recently in a, a new thing with uh, Ulysses, which is an MC I fuck with. Talk about that. Having a nice little music journalism thing. <laughs> and eventually get some L.A. cats on that make rap music that are probably boring with their lives and their craft. But see if they have anything to say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. I mostly just smoke weed and I just fucking chill with the boys and I make raps, dude. Ask them, you make music. And then ask them why. And then <laughs> a big long pause pontificating. Sometimes I see kids in my neighborhood. I just want to ask them if they make music because I know they do. <laughs> it's probably the, terrible, the, but what if it's really good? You never know. Yeah. The the question of if you if you ask them straight up like yo you, uh, you make music they say yeah. You ask them why. That answer right after that tells a lot about the person and what they're doing. So you can have dad both. beats me. I bet I if they okay if they say because my dad beats me, or if they say because I want to fucking get rich and fuck hoes. Yeah. And the song's still fucking good. I don't care. Like, yeah, yeah. If it's a good song, I don't care. Yeah, there's always there's always uh, you know, the Venn diagram of good music that you can enjoy, or. Cause, you know, sometimes you got that, that that turn up, but sometimes the turn up music that random cats are making aren't even like not even that good of a turn up music. Still got to be unique with the turn up music. I think it's all in the melody because they're all saying the same thing. They all have the same filters on their voices, and all the beats sound the same. But some every once in a while, one of them catches a good melody. 
that yeah. lets him stand out. That was like the Fetty Wap effect. He was really yeah. good at that. Yeah. yeah, that is kind of the the uniqueness of of somewhat generic music, but you got that that one little riff that is different than people that is unique to yourself or one aspect of yourself that is completely a clone of the people that you look up to music wise, then you got something to chew on, you know? Dude, Fetty Wap really had like four hits in the top five at once and then just dipped. Yeah. He I was I was actually diving into Fetty Wap stuff a couple months ago of of new stuff. Does um, he still drop shit? Is he just out? I Does think he invest in real estate now or what? He so we got some 2015, 2018, a new 2020 single that definitely going to play for the third trimester. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, Damn, he's Fetty doing brother shot. Hmm? Fetty Wap's brother was shot. Oh, really? Yeah, two days ago. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Why'd you have to do him like that? I didn't do shit. I was he. I was here potting. I was here with you. Don't You're look at me. It. You're on it. Oh wow! Monday, Wednesday, same. and Friday. How could I drop a episode two a.m. on a Monday and be alleged to be out in the streets committing crimes? I was obviously doing episode two twenty two of Ricker and Bond in that free flowing conversation right. about whatever is appropriate at the time. I'm Bond Jet. I'm calling John David Ricker, and we have to take a break, Your Honor. <laughs> so you I have to make sure my side. kitchen's not burning down. Okay. Those Why guitar licks you in want the back? me, man? Those guitar licks. I love, I love a a song that kind of has a a long drawn out guitar kind of just going through melodic wise. Makes yeah. you feel good. That song made me feel good. I was like, I liked it. That's that 2019, but apparently 2020 Fetty Wap. Called Black Friday. I hate music. I hate music. Didn't you say I, you heard someone say one time that they hated music? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recall who, where, when, or why. That's probably some childhood trauma right there. <laughs> I don't think you can have a normal upbringing and hate music. My father was a songwriter for Michael Jackson. And whenever he would write a hit, he would beat me. <laughs> So I would pray to God every day that this not be a hit. This new song that he made for Michael not be a hit. And every time it was a fucking smash. And each <laughs> with each smash, he would beat me harder. The joy of music, the sweet, sweet melodies in my ear triggered my brain. And all I could feel is pain. So when I would see videos of people at Michael Jackson concerts literally crying, I would be like, you have no idea the fucking tears that came from my eyes as a result of this music being created you ungrateful swine and that is why i hate music my name is jimmy fallon <laughs> <laughs> jimmy fallon he has to swallow it down every time the roots hit that sweet sweet drum beat that's why he's a fucking alcoholic is it what's up with jimmy fallon on tv right now what is he doing it's like a fucking no but like with like corona does, like does it from his house or something pretty lame it's all lame dude all i That's see back all i want stew, i think is to see the roots i want to see quest love i want to see black dot i want to see the other dudes that no one really knows the name of but they got a tuba guy and all i want for them is to play that's all i want i'll never forget quest love's face at the grammys right after kobe died just like a man in pain i forgot about yes, that he's just like a guy that did not want to be at the grammys oh man just yeah. could yeah he looks just like a mess going to your job i mean he looks sharp but he was a mess <laughs> don't get me wrong he looked immaculate tailored to the t beard all symmetrical fucking kobe god damn it yeah i have GG. a did you did you see that that steve jobs rick and bond meme on instagram rick and bond I don't think I did. I, don't think, I think I missed oh, that one. It was it was a it was a Kobe related. It was Kobe related. It was pretty fucking dark. It was it was a dark. I don't, know. Yeah, I don't it was dark. fuck with Kobe jokes. So he was kind of just a part straight. of the joke. 
It was Who actually. Who the hell is this? What are you doing? Who's what? Sorry, I was just following someone on Instagram. I have no idea who they are. Continue. Thank you. It was a, a sweet, sweet Ricker and Bond meme. Only got about a K. We're still we're still at the, the top tier of Ricker and Bond memes and overall content. I think usually the content will always be below the memes in number of reels. Also, Instagram does not have insights on reels. I would love if you could give me some insights on reels. Zuckerberg. 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 I would love if Instagram would stop being a bitch about everything. I would I, love it if they would return it to the way it's supposed to be. Sure. For looking at your friend's content. Uh, I just use it as marketing. I asked That's a chick like, that, I, that I memed hard on the Ricker and Bond, the top Ricker and Bond meme. Uh, if, she, if, she, if she wanted to, to come on the pod and uh, she didn't respond. She responded to something else, but didn't respond. I just want to come in here, a quick little two conver- two minute conversation. Like, hey, you got memed hard. What's going on? Are you going to Coachella in that in that video? What's going on? And she was like, nah. She didn't say anything. My follow up. I did replay that song of hers. <laughs> Good You're gonna get a call, and it's gonna be a guy. It's gonna be like, please stop contacting my daughter. <laughs> She's sixteen. Yeah. She she might actually be a younger age. But the, Damn, the, Coachella, dude. The meme did say 18. I wonder if Either Coachella way. was a profitable venture. Or if it like just barely made even. Because they pay those artists a fucking lot. Yeah. I wonder who owns it, man. It was probably, um, it, you know Golden what it probably Voice. was, man. What is it? What? Golden Voice. Is that goddamn um, Diplo? Or no? I know Diplo had a thing. I don't think it's Diplo. Golden Voice. Golden Voice has been around for like 20, like maybe 30 years, I think. What do we, oh, Golden Voice? Golden Voice. Golden Voice. What do we got here, Golden Voice? Golden Voice with a a Coachella-esque logo established 1981. Boys and girls. Uh, You think they gave up? Talk about long con. Think of, talk about long future. Yeah, now they make tents for fucking... Oh, they were going to make tents for hospitals for the pandemic or something. Not the best website. On mobile, Not least. the best at getting back to me about a job, but, you know, I'm still waiting with a smile on my face. Um, yeah, I, I want to know, like, the history of Golden Voice, Golden Voice, but... Obviously, you're, you you don't want people going to Golden Voice to do that. You just want them to buy tickets. I get it. I get All it. All you got to know is that that was the last Coachella ever. Gary I think Tovar. they also do Flogna. He named... <laughs> Bro, what? So so the, uh, the fourth or fifth hit on Google for Golden Voice comes up with Gary Tovar, right? A, a man, I'm assuming. Gary Tovar on Wikipedia. It says he's known as a music promoter and marijuana smuggler in the U.S. Why? He named his music concert business Golden Voice Productions after a strain of marijuana that users said gave them a feeling of being spoken to by angels, still not knowing about the marijuana smuggling. Wikipedia, early life and drug trafficking. Tovar, let's see how tall is he, doesn't say... I know, you know, Ricker and Bond audience really like to know the, the height of the celebrities we talk about. Only Tolls. Only Tovar tolls. was born in Los Angeles and began smuggling illicit goods as a 14-year-old when he brought fireworks into the U.S. from Tijuana in Mexico. So he always had that business mindset. He did. Influenced by someone referred to as LaRue, who was connected to Timothy Leary's The Brotherhood of Eternal Love, Timothy Leary is a LSD dude. Tovar's involvement with the marijuana began in the late 1960s with his sources for the seeds that he distributed, including U.S. servicemen on furlough from the Vietnam War. Always just, you know, he's hustling out here, man. He, he saw a market, and he was giving those marijuana seeds to the cats that were jobless because they were in a war in the 60s. And he was like, hey, guys, want to go to Coachella and smoke this weed? 
His Frank's playing this year. Was such that he was able to guarantee. I love how it's talking about like, is this a white man dog? <laughs> I I would is be surprised Mex- at at the at the, the the skin color of this man. He's Korean. Because <laughs> they're they, they're talking about this this drug smuggling like 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 it is it is is an enterprise business. But I'm wondering if it's skewed towards one race or another. Um. So his organization was such that he was able to guarantee a market and a distribution network for the growers to whom he sold the seeds. The strains that he imported include Thai stick and Acapulco gold. He earned many millions of dollars before being arrested by federal drug agents in 1991. He fought conspiracy charges from Los Angeles County Jail before being imprisoned in October 1992 for seven years on four counts relating to trafficking from Arizona. This is the guy that started Golden Voice? This is the guy that everybody is paying to go to Coachella. Music promotion, oh, this right? So this this is going I mean he was alive in the 60s, right? So he's he's so he's, he's an old. old guy. He's old. Um his interest in music promotion <laughs> after no no so he made millions of dollars, right? Jesus, this is interesting, man. Is there a documentary on this? Can I get him on the pod, man? Um, I think there is a Coachella documentary, but I don't know about Golden I Voice. want Gary Tovar documentary. When, when someone sounds, is a, sounds Jewish, first sentence Tovar is sounds Latino actually. Gary, but his name is Gary. I I still am not sure. Gary's a winner's name. Youth Brigade performing December 12th. This guy is Mexican as hell. Is he? Yeah. Anyways. His golden voice. Oh my god, dude. This guy's a winner. 1981 is when his music promotion interest began. He, uh... His younger sister told him that the police were stifling development of punk rock music in Southern California. You know, punk rock, very DIY. Same with the early hip-hop days. Uh, this was three years after he and his sister had attended the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco. See, the last concert performed by Sex Pistols. Punk rock genre was guess. not popular with promoters. What? When did he sell the company? Getting to it. Um, he lived between Santa Barbara and Huntington Beach. Promoted his first show in 1981. Featured... U.S. bands T.S.O.L., Shattered Faith, and Rhino 39. I'm guessing that these are punk bands. I'm doing some DIY stuff. Um, he gained a reputation for not ripping off the performers, paying them reasonable rates for their work, and thus soon became influential in the business in California. Also had influence beyond the state through his booking agency, which associated bands such as The Vandals and Social Distortion. Visited Britain in 1982. Finance shows in Los Angeles by British punk bands. Highlight was a series of monthly concerts involving international punk bands held at the Grand Olympic Auditorium. In years around the time of 1984 in Los Angeles, that's when they were doing the Olympic Games. Dead Kennedys, Bad Religion, so he built up a network of punk bands doing DIY shows. His promotions were ultimately loss making. He estimates his losses at between three and four million dollars over a ten year period, but they did not provide a means. <laughs> but they did not provide a means for him to launder money from the illegal drug business. He said that oh, we no. were ahead, we had the resources, enough to gamble and be very daring and bring over bands who were ahead of their time. Some of the bands they would come through and people would tell me six months later how I should get them. We were ahead of the fans in a lot of ways, and I paid for it dearly by losing money. Let's get a little deeper into the 80s. Um, I remember the 80s. Those were crazy times. Is this man not associated with this? Yeah, he, he named his music concert business Golden Voice Productions. Which leads me to Anshu's Entertainment Group corporation he oh i see i see i see tavar is no longer involved with this <laughs> bro 
there, this Wikipedia is acting like smuggling was just like 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 it, it says Tovar is no longer involved with smuggling, but acts as a consultant to Golden Voice, which now operates as operates the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. So this man is not heading Golden Voice promotions right now. Damn. So he's just a legend. I it <laughs> this, what this Wikipedia <laughs> this Wikipedia article just seems like a like a like yo this man was going hard, but in in Wikipedia. Um. It does seem very interesting though. I'm 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 interested. I'm interested. I'm interested too. I'm interested. The enterprise of drug smuggling, man. Oh, I do want to see what he looks like. Gary Tovar. Golden voice, Gary Tovar. Does look rather Latino. Frank, I'm sorry. Interesting. All right, where are we at? Let's wrap it up. Let's do it. Have a good night, everybody. I mean, a fucking great weekend. Um, You deserve better than us. You can get better by going to adobehouse.live slash store, getting a Ricker and Bond t-shirt. Leave him, girl. And you can do that while you're wearing your Ricker and Bond t-shirt. Yes. Or a Bond gin shirt. Which is just the finest quality of black. Egyptian cotton. Blackest. Just the deepest black. The softest material. And the best look you can get. People I are can't gonna get be like, softer. Hey, is that guy wearing a black t-shirt? You'll know what it really is. And that makes you exclusive. God bless. All right, everybody. Take care. Be well. And, and be well. Amen. Amen.